All right, why don't we uh, keep going here. Now, if you have the note packet, there's a, now, let's see, you might have noticed that we've already gone through a number of terms, you know, axial, tension, compressions, uh, shear, stress and strain, deformation, and that is an issue that comes up in this class, is just the number of terms that you got to keep up with. A number of them are Greek, too, they're Greek letters, so... On page 120, now that's only if you have the packet. I didn't put it in the stapled handout because you don't really need it right now, but it's in the packet. I've got a number of the terms and just little sketches that hopefully illustrate what they are, okay? So just uh, realize that on page 120 is a lot of little graphs and such that show what these different things are, okay? Um, now let's look at a bit of an example here that we could look at and this this will illustrate something pretty important here for working with this stuff so let's have a look so let's say we've got this shaft here and it's attached to a wall so this is 140 i think it's just a bit ahead of you know skip a little bit ahead and you should get there pretty pretty readily there i think we're good 140 there do you guys, how about a, for the stapled handout, do you, is it, okay, no, we got it, great, thanks. So what we've got there is we've got this shaft, and it's somehow solidly attached to a wall, and then we've got some flanges on that, those discs that are being loaded right now, okay, and what we want to do is find the stress in the shaft, okay. Um, so we want to find the normal stress in sections A, B, B, C, and C, D in the shaft. Now, the uh, letter that's used for normal stress is a Greek letter. They use a lot of Greek letters in this class. That particular one is sigma. All right. Now, one thing to remember on this stuff is that this um, alphabet... Um, not quite, you know, the actual evolution of this thing is, is a little interesting. I think it originally started in the Sinai Desert, and they took hieroglyphs, and then they realized they had sounds with them, and so they used Aleph, and that was the first one, and Bet was the second one. And then it eventually got to the Phoenicians. You know, Phoenicians are over on the Mediterranean Sea. Um, they're, um, that actually turned into Lebanon, is what it did, or Lebanon, yeah, Lebanon, um, eventually. And, and they actually made a true alphabet. That was a big deal about 3,000 years ago, I think. And uh, from there, it went over to the Greeks. And so we use a lot of these variables with the Greek names attached. So that's the letter sigma. And of course, when the Greeks went to the Romans, and then the Romans, we eventually got it, which I'm sure you're all very interested with that. But the, the bottom line on that is, is that that letter... I think if you look at our cursive S, which I don't think my third grade teacher would be very happy with how I'm making this, but it's something like that, isn't it? And that's kind of, you know, that sigma turned into our cursive S is probably the easiest way to see it. Or maybe if you look, I guess if you just kind of wrap that thing around with an S, you'll get to something that looks like a sigma. So sigma is kind of an S is what it is, okay? So, um, so there you go. So that's sigma. And what that is, is normal stress, okay? So we could call this out as sigma AB, sigma BC, and sigma CD. Now, I'm kind of mentioning this because if you look at your blue formula sheet, you'll see that sigma equals P over A, okay? Um, on there somewhere, upper left-hand corner, I think, right there, number one. So the formulas are numbered, that's number one. Um, just understand that like in homework or on a test, I'm not going to say what a sigma equal. What I'm going to say is what's the normal stress. So you want to spend a bit of time in this class connecting the, the normal stress to that symbol is what you want to do, okay? You want to know what that symbol means. It's normal stress, okay? And there's a number of other symbols coming at us, Greek letters, so... We want to be sure that we know what they mean, not just that we can 
take p and divide it by a, but that also let you know what those things are. Okay, I just want to bring, mention that. Okay, so we want to find the normal stress in the shaft with these loads applied. All right, now step number one is to do all the statics, okay? We have the applied forces. What we want are the reactions, okay? So what I want to do first is get that reaction at A. So that would be the first thing that I would do here, would be to find that. Because I have what's applied to this shaft, but what I want to find is what, what that one reaction at A is, which I don't yet know. Okay, now notice I've got these flanges on here, these discs, so I've got 800 and 800. When I break this down to a free body diagram, I just add them because they're symmetrical. Put them right in the middle, that's 1600. 3400 and 3400 gets me 6800 right there, and 2200 and 2200 gets me the 4400 right there, okay? So those loads are applied on either side of those flanges there, so we can combine them and apply them right in the middle of the object. Okay. That's what we're doing. We want to find RA. So to do that, we do just a little bit of statics there, right? Sum of FX, set that equal to zero, and then off we go, and we've got RA. Now that's to the right, so that'll be a positive. And then I've got 4,400 negative. And then I've got 6,800 positive. And then I've got 1600 negative, okay? And those are all Newtons. I didn't label every one, but there you go. I'll label one of them, okay? So we can go ahead and solve for the reaction, and that'll get us all the forces that act on this object, okay? So if I solve for RA, what I get is negative 800 Newtons. Now, I assumed RA acted to the right, so that went into my equation as a positive number. What I got for RA for an answer was a negative. Now, what that means is, no, it doesn't act to the right. So the negative there means it doesn't go to the right, it goes to the left. So that's 800 newtons to the left. Y'all okay with that? Remember that from statics? Okay. So there's more forces pulling this thing away from the wall than there are pushing it towards the wall. So the wall's got to pull it in, okay? That's what's happening there, okay? All right, so now what I've got is I've got the reaction. And when I have the reaction, I've got all the forces acting on that shaft. Now I'm doing stress here. I'm going to take force over area. So I want the cross-sectional area of the shaft. That's pi r squared. I've got a four centimeter diameter. That's a two centimeter radius. So that's pi times 0.02 meters. Two centimeters is 0.02 meters squared. When I'm doing metric, I keep everything in newtons and meters. And then I convert to giga and mega and all that stuff when I'm done. So that's how I handle it. I'm not that bright, so I can't remember newtons per millimeter squared is megapascals and kilonewtons per millimeter squared is gigapascals. I can't remember that. So I just keep everything in newtons, everything in meters, and convert when I'm all done. That's, that's how I handle metrics. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is I want to find the stress in AB anywhere between AB. So to accomplish that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut between A and B. This is a lot like the method of sections, if you remember that, okay? So what I've got, method of sections from uh, statics, okay? Where you cut through a truss to solve for the forces in some of the members. We're going to cut through that shaft anywhere between A and B and what I've got there is an internal force. And that's what we do in this class is we solve for the internal forces. So that internal force is P, which means load in AB. Okay. So I've got 800 to the left, which is the reaction at A. And then I've got PAB to the right. Okay. So what I did there was I just cut anywhere between A and B, like that, and I solved for that, and this was 800, I think it was. 
So I'm going to take this free body diagram. I make a cut where I'm interested. I take one whole side or the other. I took the left, and then I'm working with that. And I'm solving for the internal force that the shaft has to develop to hold itself together. That's what I'm solving for. Because if the shaft can't develop 800 newtons there, it's going to fall apart. That's what it's going to do. Okay? It's going to break. So what I've got there is negative 800 to the left, that's RA, plus my unknown PAB. So then I can solve for PAB. It's 800 newtons. It's pulling, so that's tension. Tension is pulling. Y'all good with that? Okay. So that's the internal force is what that is. That's the force inside the shaft. Now to find the stress in the shaft, I'll take the internal force. I'll just divide out the area and I'll get the stress. Okay. That's basically it. So I'll take the load and I'll divide it by the area. I'll get 637,000 newtons per meter squared, which is 0.637 megapascals tension. Doing okay with that? Okay. Put one over the other, given this versus uh, X goes. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Just, Just so you know. Be okay with this. Yeah. Good with that? Why don't you find the stress in AB then? Or, I'm sorry, between B and C. So find sigma BC. Follow the same steps. Make a cut between B and C. Take one whole side or the other. When you make these cuts, to have a valid free body diagram, <laughs> you're going to take the whole object to the left or to the right, whichever one suits you. Just make it so just draw a line down through B and C. Right. So then take one whole side or the other. Yeah. Sure, because this is the left of your cut. Because your cut's in there, somewhere between B and C. Okay? Mm -hmm. Think of taking a saw and cutting through between B and C. I'm um, just overcomplicating it. Do I add EA to it? Oh, but that's internal, okay? We're just dealing with external forces. I mean, there's a million internal forces anywhere you want to look, so you can't, it doesn't mean anything to add those. You're just adding what you see, and I think you're right. You are, keep it simple. Make a cut, boom, 
take everything to one side or everything to the other. That's it. That's all we're doing. Okay. This one would be 4.127 uh, mega pascals. Y'all getting 5,200 tension for the load? Oh, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> Yeah, it's for the load. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I was like, I'm way up. Yeah, yeah. I got 5200. Y'all, y'all okay with that? Okay, so you let us run around. I mean, you can use either side you want. Um, it, you'll get the same answer. So if I use the left-hand side, I got 800 to the left, 4,400 to the left, and then plus the load, or the internal force, which is PBC to the right. And PBC is 5,200 to the right, which means it's pulling, it's in tension. Now what I'm doing here, I'm assuming that both of the, that this load is in tension. So notice, depending on which side of the free body diagram I use, they act different directions. So if I'm using that left-hand side, PBC will pull to the right. If I use the right-hand side, PBC will pull to the left, okay? They're both tension, okay? So if I use the right-hand side, I'm gonna have minus PBC, because it's to the left, plus the 6,800 minus the 1,600. Now, when I solve for PBC, I get a positive answer. That means my assumption was correct. It does act this way. And if it's acting that way, it's tension. Okay. So you have to pay attention to directions, and you also have to you know, realize that tension is pulling Compression is pushing. If you remember going back to trusses, it's that same idea. Okay. From uh, went from statics into the trusses. Okay. okay. And once you've got that internal force, you can divide out the area and you'll get the stress. Four million one hundred and thirty-eight thousand, roughly. So that's four point one four megapascals, and that's T for tension. And this is internal forces? Yeah, anywhere between A and B. That's. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, between B and C. So if you made this thing out of some material, what your next thing to do would be to look up that material and see what kind of stress it can handle. Because materials are rated on the stresses they can handle, how many pounds per square inch they can handle. So you'd look at it and see it, whether this was allowed, you know, within tolerances or not, you know. Doing all right with that? Is the P what you use for internal forces? Yeah, That's for some P. reason they use P. I'm not quite sure even where that comes from, but it's what they use. <laughs> it might be. It's a, well, maybe. I don't know. It's a P. I, I know they use the letter P, but it might be. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Now, here's what's going on. I, I'll get you a little bit of homework here. This will be due Wednesday, and that is, uh, is today the 8th? I think it is. Yes. Yeah, so that'll be the 17th, because I'll go over it next time. Monday is a holiday already, I'm pretty sure, isn't it? Yeah. It's coming Monday. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the fifteenth. Yeah, there's Monday. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a day off, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'll be here. Oh, you will. Okay. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Um, but so this will be due a week from Wednesday. We'll cover it Wednesday, and then it'll be due the following week. Okay. So we good with that. Um, I don't know as we will. I mean, it's it's very similar to what we just did. I mean, I could show it to you real quick if you want. Sure. Okay. So, we good with that? For finding CD, could you just choose the other end? And yeah, you could, you could use whichever end you want. Use the one that's easy, that has the fewest forces. So, the force around C is cut off. I'm sorry? Right, because we're between C and D, so I'll cut here, take the right hand side. Okay. So you can cut, you can take either side you want, and this is a, the technique. You cut where you're interested. You got to take one whole side or the other. Okay. 
you, you, you've got to go all the way to the end of the, the beam or the shaft or whatever it is. So if you're doing CD, you've got to go all the way down to D then if you're using the right-hand side. You can't just cut a little piece out and use it. You've got you to take an entire side to the end of the member. Okay. It's the best, but it's not. I don't think the best paper is better. But okay, so we good on this this one here. I mean, just cut. You could you could have taken the left too, right? I mean, if you'd done the left, what you'd have sum of fx equals zero. Now I wouldn't do the left because it's more work. But okay, I would have had PCD to the right, so that would be positive. Eight hundred to the left. Forty four hundred to the left, and sixty eight hundred to the right. Okay. There's some of FX. If you'd taken the left-hand side, which would have been kind of a, maybe not the best advised way to do it because it would have been more work. Okay, and then solve for PCD. And you get the same thing. Okay. So what, 800 and 4,400 make 5,200? And then get the difference between that and 6,800, you get 1,600. Okay. Same thing. And I guess that would be negative, wouldn't it? Or would it? Yeah, it would it be negative. So the negative means you assumed incorrectly. So it's not pulling, it's not tension, it's compression. Okay. When you get a negative answer, that means your assumption of direction was incorrect. You've got to turn it around. We, we good with that? Okay. So that's, I guess, the first thing to know about strengths is that right there. Okay. And that's, we'll be doing this a lot. We, we cut inside of things. We find those internal forces. That's what we do. Okay. So 102, 103 are due. Um... Wednesday now 102 let's all be sure we got the right answer for that because I busted that initially but then I fixed it but let's just be sure that you know well, 103 I'm sorry it's 103 and I've got it corrected I want to just hand it to you here but Sigma a B should be 23 750 and then Sigma BC Ought to be sixty-eight seven fifty. Okay. There we go. Yeah, right. I'm just saying, yeah, I, I fixed it on this one. Those are the correct answers. Yeah, they're the correct like, answers. I've noticed so back and have that fixed already. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you all have the right answer. You're all good. No worries. So I want to be sure you had it. So okay. So we good? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's call it good. Mm -hmm.